The disintegration series, okay, or a decay series. All right. Turns out that some guys are, you know, pretty big. Some elements are pretty large. They have a lot of protons and neutrons, and they basically can't get stable just with one, you know, shooting out of one particle or, or one radioactive decay. They will take a series of them. Okay, and I'm actually going to have you guys. It's, it's a weird when you when you graph it out. I'm going to have you guys make this graph today. I'm going to show it to you on the board and see what it looks like. And uh, it's kind of uh, a weird because they'll change. They're going to change the identity of the element multiple times throughout the process. All right, because they just can't get stable through a single radioactive decay. They can't attain stability by just giving off one particle. And a classic example of this is uranium, okay, which is one of the guys we're going to talk about more when we get to nuclear power. And there's a lot of arguments used against nuclear power. All right, you're going to see a lot of you're going to see a lot of different arguments for and against nuclear power over the next uh, uh, week or so. All right. And you live next to a nuclear power plant, so you know probably a little bit more about it. But you know, when I first moved here, you knew I, students knew more about it than I did before I started taking classes on it. Well, when we get to that, we'll be talking about uranium as a fuel. A lot of people are afraid of uranium. I think it's oh, it's really scary, really dangerous. Actually, it's not really uranium that's so dangerous or so scary. Okay, it's a lot of the other products that are made because uranium has such a long series of decays. Such a long time, all right? You might think, well, that's bad, right? I mean, it's going to be radioactive for th hundreds of thousands of years. Actually, that's good. If it takes that long to, for it to get stable, it means it's only giving off a particle every now and then. It's not giving off. Uh, it's not be giving off a whole lot of radiation at any given time, all right? It's the guys who are g in the middle that are actually more dangerous. So we'll talk about that at the time. But let's do the decay series for this guy. Okay, I'm going to actually give you that chart in a second. Um, uranium-238 and uranium-235 both decay in this uh, way. What you're going to see when you graph this in a few minutes, and I'm, I want you to actually write the equations for each one and graph each one. And if you look at this paper uh, you're going to get here, all right, it tells you the particles that are given off. And look at all of the, there's alpha, beta, beta, alpha, 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 beta, beta, alpha, beta, beta, alpha. That's the actual series. I didn't make that up. It's not like I just said, oh, I think I'll throw these on here for practice. This is actually what happens. And it kind of looks like this. Don't have to copy this, obviously. All right. Um, uranium-238 starts, all right, right here, starting here. And look at the weird series here, okay? Uranium-238 gives off an alpha particle and drops down to be thorium-234. Then that undergoes a beta emission, beta, becomes these guys, and this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and here, 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 here. All right, now let's take a look at the half-life of each of these guys, which means we're going to, by the way, we're going to talk about half-life in the future, too. I kind of have to skip ahead a little bit. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of the sample to give off all the radiation, be half as radioactive as it was, okay? Half of the sample to decay. So the first one happens in 4.5 times 10 to the 9th, I believe, uh, A, yeah, yeah, stands for years. It takes, for two, uranium-238 to drop down to thorium-234, it takes... Uh, Four, five, zero, 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 zero years for half of that to decay. And then it would take that many years for the next half to decay. And then that many years for the next half to decay that's left behind. So obviously we're talking hundreds of thousands, millions of years before the sample is completely gone. Just from here to here. From this guy to get to that guy takes 24.1 days. That's how long the half-life is. All right, so half of it's gone in 24 days. For this guy to go to here, 1.17 minutes is the half-life. 
2.4 times 10 to the fifth years to go from here to here. 7.7 times 7 10 to the fourth year, thousands of years, thousands of years, 1,600 years, three days, three minutes, 26 minutes. Okay, these are the times it takes for all this stuff to happen. So in order to go from uranium-238 down to stable lead, is going to take, obviously, for all of it, or, or for virtually all of it to uh, go away, it's going to take hundreds of thousands, millions of years for this stuff actually decays. Now, you might think that's a bad thing, but actually it's not, like I said. Uh, the more time it takes, the less radiation is being given off. Where is more radiation going to be given off? Well, think about it. If it only takes 24 days or 1.17 minutes for half of this stuff to decay, it must be giving off a heck of a lot of particles at once, right, in order for it to happen like that quickly. All right? So, but now, the, the, there's, it's weird. There's a, there's a, uh, a trade-off. Am I worried about the guys who have really short half-lives, like in the minutes? No. The power plant produces more, many different um, decay products, different elements that are uh, a byproduct of the nuclear fission that happens up there. Some of them have half-lives in the seconds and minutes. I don't worry about them. But at time, the time they spend in the spent fuel pool, before they even get to storage, they're gone. There's nothing left of them. If it only take, if it's only in the seconds or minutes, they got off so much radiation so fast they were contained in the fuel pool, the spent fuel pool, the whole time. So I don't worry about them. They're done. I don't worry about guys like this who have, you know, a couple hundred thousand years for half of it to go away. The guys I worry about are somewhere in the middle. All right, uh, somewhere in the middle where they're still around for years, you know, but they don't, so they don't go away. And they're given off enough radiation that they can still cause problems. All right, and there are plenty of those kind of products that happen too. All right, so you're going to make this right now. I'm going to uh, shut off the video. Your job is to complete this graph. You're going to, on the back, put each of the equations, starting with, ura starting with uranium-238 and ending with lead down here. And see if you get the same, I'm going to put this back up in a little bit, and see if you get the same graph and the same guides, all right, uh, that I got here, okay?